Okay guys, let's see the flap we use to expose the mandibular ramus. The flap is composed by two different incisions, uh, an horizontal incision that can be made intrasuncular if for example we have to extract a wisdom tooth or in the vestibular mucosa if uh, we have to harvest some bone from the ramus. In this case uh, we are preparing a flap to harvest some bone so we start the horizontal incision in the vestibule, in the veolar mucosa, just uh, below the mucogingival junction, you have only to leave coronally two or three millimeters of uh, alveolar mucosa to be able to, to suture the flap at the end of the procedure, uh, not damaging the periosteum of, uh, of the adjacent teeth. While performing the horizontal uh, incision, you have to tilt the blade toward the lingual side because uh, uh, in this case uh, the lingual side is the safe zone because you have all the mandible and uh, the teeth that protect the, the lingual structures while in the vestibule you have the only structure in this, uh, in this uh, zone, in this area that uh, injuring with you could uh, kill your patient, okay, the, the fascial artery so it would be dangerous uh, losing the control of the blade uh, to injure the fascial artery so uh, take the blade in, tilted uh, in the, in the line, lingual direction during this horizontal incision we cut the mucous membrane the submucosa and the periosteum in this area we don't have uh, the buccinator muscle yet the buccinator muscle starts uh, uh, inserts itself uh, more apically in the in the mandible so in this zone you can see there is no bleeding because uh, there, there is uh, only a very thin tissue to be cut then we have to start the vertical distal incision it is an oblique vertical incision that goes toward distal it is a very very shallow inc incision to, because we want to cut only the, the mucous membrane and not the underlying muscles. Okay, you can see that the muscles uh, uh, have not been cut. In this case, there is a very few bleeding. And you don't have to cut the muscles because inside the muscles uh, uh, passes the, the, the buccal nerve that uh, come from, from the lingual site and goes toward, toward the chin passing uh, inside the buccinator muscle, okay, piercing the buccinator muscle so you can risk to, to damage, to, to injure this, this nerve furthermore uh, the, the cutting of the muscle can create the swelling and pain for the patient and above all bleeding during the surgery then we, we look for the periosteum and we cut only the periosteum distally, not the muscle, but only the mucous membrane at first and uh, then the periosteum. At this point the muscle can be dissected by a, a blunt dissection, uh, while the periosteum and the mucous membrane have been uh, cut, so you can uh, elevate your flap as you want. This is a little elevation because uh, here we need to use only the, the safe scraper to, to get a little amount of bone for a little regeneration. But if you need a block or you need a bigger amount uh, of bone, you can uh, go toward the, the distal, uh, distal side and expose all the mandibular ramos until the coronoid process.